Hi, Christina here, founder of Liberate. I wanted to let you know that all of our amazing practitioners, healers, and intuitives are available for remote sessions. And we are continuously adding new classes, workshops, and meditations to serve you every week. Thank you for joining us, and I hope that we can help you liberate yourself. Wakey, wakey, eggsy, bacon. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Hi, this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Liberate Deep Cuts. I have yeah. a crystal for that. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so you can maybe guess what we're talking about today. I have our one, our only, our fabulous Rebecca. Rebecca is with us. And she's going to talk about Moldavite and Libyan yeah. Desert Glass and Tektite and all these fun things. We're going to deep dive into these uh, cosmic realms of crystals for you today. All right, so Rebecca, hi, how are you? Hi, good, how are you? Um, do you want to start? I mean, Rebecca <laughs> came up with the topic today to talk about um, how a lot of people, or I guess I could start a little bit and then mm -hmm. pass it over, uh, that a lot of people have asked questions when they're entering into a spiritual path or a crystal path. Uh, they're looking for what crystal can they have for that to help with that? And a lot of people find themselves drawn to hearing about stones like meteorites, uh, tektite, Libyan desert glass, moldavite. And there's a lot of confusion on what they are, what they do, what they're good for, and what the difference is between them. And mm. we, we wanted to take a little bit of time and from our experience of what they, they work and they do for the energetic body, body and the soul, talk about that, but also explain and show you a couple pieces so that you can have a better understanding of how to um, tell them apart and what you might be drawn to. Yeah, definitely. And it's funny because I haven't worked with Moldavite in a while, but Moldavite is a crystal that, um, especially for like big seekers in the new age community, they're like, if they want to like get super spiritual, they're like looking for Moldavite. It's always like, um, and there's a lot of fake Moldavite on the market too. So you have to be careful because it does only come from a very specific region in the Czech Republic. Um, but so just to start off, Moldavite's the one that everyone hears about first. Um, and I only happen to have like a little piece right here. Um, uh, but you can so, see it's so good. Yeah, it's um, green and it's like a glass texture. Um, and but but when you see it like if you see it in a crystal bowl it can almost look kind of black so it's you can only see that it's green when the, the light is passing through it's really bumpy sorry zoom i'm like there we mm -hmm. go. you can like really see it but this is a nice piece um so it's a heart chakra stone and you can kind of see that based on the color green right sometimes it's like really simple the color of the stone sort of corresponds to which chakra that it's going to work with the heart chakra is green but this is people don't even tend to think of moldavite as a heart chakra stone um it's more known as like this galactic extraterrestrial like super connect cosmically man like all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh stone and it's supposed to massively like blast your spiritual channels open and get you back into alignment so um the first time that i ever picked moldavite up one of my very best friends jamie lynn hart um singer songwriter check her out jamie hart <laughs> um, but she she was like hold this and it was the first time that I'd ever held a crystal and I could feel it. I was like, but I didn't feel it in my palm. Um, I felt like my whole body was like electrified and it was a little uncomfortable. I was like, ooh, and I gave it back to her. Like I didn't want to hold on to it. And uh, so you kind of have to be ready for it because what it does uh, from my understanding, and you can chime in here in a minute, Christina, but it, it brings all of your it brings you into alignment very quickly. So it can align your chakras like boom, 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 just boom, brings everything kind of into alignment very quickly, which is why if you're super out of alignment, um, it can feel very jarring to your system. It's yeah. kind of 
you know, I'm an astrologer too. So I talk about eclipses sometimes have this similar effect um, on people is it will bring you back into alignment. And now if you are really far off your path, you're going to have to get dragged across the (laughs) abyss to get back on might be like a bit of a bumpy ride, right? So people will notice when they start to work with Moldavite, um, sometimes that, you know, there's, it accelerates shift in your life. So if things need to exit that are lower vibrating or no longer resonating with you, they will go quicker, sometimes a little bit um, less gracefully, new things are coming in. So it's like, but it is like a very high vibration stone. So it shifts your energy very quickly. Um, Yeah, I actually have a couple other pieces here too. Um, And I like to say also, um, like any, yeah, I got this at Emporium. Um, this is a gentler piece. So even among crystals, each piece feels different. Like you want to always just kind of feel it out. There are other pieces of Moldavite I've picked up where I'm like, that is way too much for me. Um, but yeah, so it's an accelerator. It accelerates your shift. It accelerates your growth. And so you have to decide that you're ready for that. Um, because if you're really looking to grow, it's not necessarily, um, super smooth, but also I've seen people put Moldavite on in our store in Emporium. I saw a regular customer, literally I've seen several people go through this where they're in tears, like in a good way, they have it on. And then all of a sudden they're like, Oh my God. And like, it feels really good to their system. So it doesn't have to just be like this anxiety inducing shock. It just really depends on where you are. So what, what's your experience been with it, Christina? Yeah, on that note, backtracking a moment, depending on where you are and the power of it too is, you know, think about it, some people, that kind of remind me, I just, I just took like this Tony Robbins um, seminar and one of the things he has, you look at your, your warrior and your lover and your, um, it's pretty much just like a parts integration, but you have your warrior, your lover, your sovereign, which is like your, your king and, um, your magician inside of you and that they're different parts of your body and you kind of put them all together. And, and when he has you tap into those different aspects of yourself, uh, You know, a lot of times, like, for instance, the magician, uh, since I've been going through a lot, just being being raw and open, uh, the magician normally in somebody's life is like the fun, uh, lighthearted, childlike energy that just wants to have fun with life, wants to embrace everything, doesn't take anything that seriously. Well, when we got to connecting me with my magician, I started bawling because I've been so disconnected from that aspect of of the self, but it was in the same way what you're describing with some of the customers, this bawling of joy of like, I remember to remember who I am, right? And And it's a feeling that's like beyond a cognitive, they don't even really know what's happening. They're just having this feeling. Yeah, and so the best that I could use to describe that is is this remembers to remember who they are, like this feeling of there I am again, there's my soul again, Mm -hmm. as they get reconnected to that aspect of their self. So I would almost feel like a lot of people maybe had these disconnects from parts of their self that the Moldavite immediately put them back into alignment, which goes with what you're saying. It's this alignment and they missed that or it was closed off or it was sheltered or it was locked away in a door that once that realigned, they were like, oh my God, there I am again, like seeing an old friend that you haven't seen in a while or connecting with them and you give them a hug and you're just like, oh my God, I'm home, you know? Um, And that's kind of uh, my experience with, with Moldavite is similar to that. However, I've always been more drawn to meteorites, which we'll get into a little bit uh, uh, later. But, you know, also on the Moldavite aspect, uh, when, you know, you got to think about, as Rebecca was saying, everything's being, has different energy, okay? So Moldavite, what it is, is it's earth matter that got hit with a meteorite. Right. And so like this is the byproduct of it. So it does have that cosmic 
collision, but where did the meteorite hit? Was it in the center? Was it right underneath where the meteorite hit? Was it off to the side? Because the energetic and the heat from that meteorite is going to go out in different directions. What was the makeup of the Earth? And that's why you might see things that are look a little bit more translucent or a little bit greener or whatever the case may be, or darker, or almost black, because you're getting different parts of this, you know? Um, in different areas and different locations. So the makeup is slightly different. But, um, and so some some stones, and this goes for any crystal. I mean, think about that, like when you look at rose quartz or amethyst or anything like that, sometimes you have really deep purple and sometimes you have really light purple and sometimes you have uh, uh, amethyst that looks like it has little red dots or little black dots in it. And sometimes it can be super clear. And it, in a, it, different makeup while it was forming creates those colors. Different levels mm -hmm. of iron, different levels of mineral composites and different density. And so that's along the same line of, of Moldavite, but also any crystal. So if people are buying crystals or looking at it, they might say, why did I feel all of this energy for this one? Or maybe this one was too intense, like, like what Rebecca was saying, that that first piece maybe was too intense, but maybe she still needed to work with it. I'm a firm believer of anything that's intense, you, you got to go into it. It's like play big or go home, right? You know, like we're here on this journey of life. If, if I mean, I get it. I get, I do get it that sometimes people, myself included, beg for a simpler, easier way when sometimes it feels like there's a thunderstorm going on and you're like, I just wanted a mild rain, you know? Uh, <laughs> but if you go through that thunderstorm, a lot more happens during that time than the mild rain. The mild rain doesn't penetrate the soil so deep that it causes the drought that had been there to revitalize the plants. The deep thunderstorm, though, will penetrate that soil, will bring things back to life, will change and uproot things that need to be uprooted. And it's like, okay, um, so in that, think about any of these stones and even, I mean, congratulate yourself if you're, if you're even interested in watching this podcast, you've already hit the, the um, reverse on the conveyor belt to say, I'm ready to evolve in this lifetime. Um, now, if you're interested in Moldavite specifically, that's even a further calling of let me get into alignment. And I always like to give the analogy of a conveyor belt coming towards you in most of the time life is gentle with most humans and they kind of space things out and say okay you're going to have three big life, left, life, life lessons in your life and you know one's going to happen when you're 25 one's going to happen when you're 50 and one's going to happen when you're 65 or something like that you know i'm just being theoretical here but and you grow when you grow mildly in your life and you have some mild ahas and you develop but you don't massively change or develop your spirit. And I mean, everybody could have their own spiritual belief system, but I believe that our souls continue to evolve beyond this lifetime. That's my personal belief. You don't have to have that, but wherever you go or whatever you believe, let that be uh, for you. But take it for a, a, a moment that if that was the case, and then my belief system is like, I, all of these things are coming at you. And so instead of doing one lifetime of evolution, maybe you do five lifetimes of evolution, maybe you do 10 lives of evolution. So they have to be spaced out less, they have to hit you more frequently. And sometimes the lessons have to come harder in order for you to get beyond it. Um, so I don't know, hopefully that's a good me metaphor for you so that you know when it's happening, it's life is happening for you, it's not happening to you. And the more you can think about that, this is happening for me. I called in these problems, these complications, these struggles, so I could evolve, so I could get to a higher plane, so I could get to the next thing, so I can play the bigger levels in the video games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, that it happens to us a lot of the time in our lives beyond our control, right? And the cool thing when you're working with, when you're consciously making the choice to work with uh, a stone like Moldavite, you're saying, all right, I am going to lean into this. And sometimes things might be like also easier in your life and it just kind of levels you up. It depends on where you are, right? And so, and when I first got my first piece of Moldavite, I actually didn't work with it very much. It took me a few years maybe three, four years before I 
felt like I was ready to. And I think, I think that's okay too, you know, cause everything's on this cosmic timing that we um, can't always control or even understand. Right. But then we do have always our free will to say, all right, I'm ready to level up. Let me make some choices here. And so working with crystals, like everything is energy, everything is frequency, right? So actually this is important because a lot of people that are um, doing crystal videos and writing about crystals skip over this one thing is like, how do crystals even work? So yeah, um, and, and I would love if you could continue yeah, off yeah. of that to, you just said the second biggest thing is you've said, I kind of worked with it here or there, but not really over two years. But when I decided I to work to. with it, how does somebody work with a crystal? And yeah. I think that that's one of the other biggest questions that we get because people don't know how to use them or how, what does it consider to work with a crystal? So well, if you let me that explain now. entrainment, right? Like how yeah. they work, like what, yeah. why, how they work. And then let me pass to you where you can explain maybe some of the ways that you can consciously decide to work with them, right? So, so um, I'm a musician as well. So I always really enjoy this analogy. Um, and you can Google videos of this and on YouTube, there's plenty of videos on, of this. So crystals and energy heal, energy healing, all of it, it all works on the concept of entrainment. Um, well, there's this whole other grace and miracles thing too, but let's just say, you know, the concept of entrainment is how it works like metaphysically. So what is entrainment? Entrainment is when one energy influences another energy. So um, metaphysically, it's not like opposites attract, but like attracts like. So um, it's the concept of like, if someone's in a crappy mood, they can bring you down or somebody is in a good mood, they can boost you up, right? So mm -hmm. crystals have um, consciousness too, because energy is consciousness. So this sweet crystal right here has its own frequency, its own energy and its own consciousness. It's vibrating at a very specific frequency. And when it's in my around me, like on, on my person or in my space, um, I'm more likely to entrain or my vibration is more likely to come more into alignment with this crystal. So the videos that you can see of this on the internet, um, it's demonstrated amazingly with the metronome. So if you guys don't know what a metronome is, it's a, a rhythmic device or a timekeeping device for musicians. You usually see it on somebody's piano, right? It's like tick, tick, tick and you can set it at different tempos, different speeds. So if you set an entire room full of metronomes, you'd have like a hundred metronomes and you set them all at different tempos. And by the way, they are meant to keep the tempo that you set them at. Like they're professional devices to keep that tempo. They're not gonna speed up and they're not gonna get slower. But if you put them all in a room together, um, they will within minutes entrain with each other and they'll all be going at the same tempo. It's incredible wow. to watch this. And so it's like a very physical, tangible uh, demonstration of this principle. And you can't argue with it. Like, there it is. It's not something that happens sometimes. It will happen every time you do this. And so if you think about the applications of that, getting into a room with a person or an animal or just everything is energy and we're all in the sea of energy and being influenced by things all the time so the next um so yeah you get a crystal and you have it you know in your space or on your body now the next step to that i would say which is something that i came to a little bit after the fact is working with it consciously so even though i was into energy i'm kind of like a little like i'm a musician and stuff but I'm kind of left brained, like I like things to be rational and ordered and like, so I can explain them also setting my intentions with my crystals and asking them to help me was like not something that I ever really did. But I've recognized in the last several years that actually that's not that far out. It doesn't not make sense because if this is consciousness, I can actually, it's just energy, but I can say, hey, um, it's the same way that you're praying to the universe, right? It, this is just a, um, a speck of consciousness, one of the universe's perspectives, right? So um, you can ask it to work with you. And, mm -hmm. um, and usually there's some sort of 
interesting things that happen. Um, it becomes more powerful of an alignment when you actually make the intention to consciously connect with any energy, whether you're working with flower essences, crystals, Reiki, like if you actually open yourself to be receptive and make that connection, it can be, um, in my experience, a more powerful effect that happens. Well, yeah, and people can even do that. Think about trying that with people in your life. The next time that you have a conversation with somebody, make the intention that you really want to connect with them. You know, yeah. that you're there, you're present, put that out there in that energy and watch and see how different that experience is for you. Because I yeah. guarantee it's going to be different. And even if you, you don't have to say it out loud to the other person, it's just your intention. But make that, say it and then go and have that conversation, meeting, event, whatever you're doing, and watch it unfold differently. Totally. And then, you know, when I, I've, it's just been a gradual process for me, but, you know, um, I am an energy worker, right? So, because we actually didn't talk about what I do. So I do all kinds oh, of different sorry. energy. Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. I didn't mention it. And uh, both Christina and I do several different energy healing modalities, if this is the first time that you're catching us here, um, and readings and energy and all that kind of stuff. But when I connect in, it's been a really gradual experience for me, but it, it's gotten more and more over the years where I'm like, ah, I can actually feel this when I call on the energy of it and I can feel it right away. And I know I'm not making it up because <laughs> it took me years to get to where I'm like, no, no, I definitely feel something. But what you feel also, I want to point out, might be different than what you read about. So a lot of people would talk about how they feel crystals Ooh, my palm is tingling or it's hot and i'm like sure like a lot of people might feel a crystal that way that's not what i experience at all i just have like a sense of what it is or within the case of moldavite i would feel my whole torso like that's how i feel crystals is i just get a feeling inside me like mm -hmm. all my whole self how do you uh how do you feel the energy of crystals? Christina? Well, it's different when I consciously tune into them versus not. So I will have to say that because that yeah. willful energy of awareness and one pointedness will always make things a little sharper. Um, it depends on the crystal, to be honest. Uh, some crystals I will immediately feel like if they work on the crown, like this opening in this channel. It also depends on where I'm at. If I'm mm -hmm. super like, open and I've been in a great space and I've been meditating regularly, I'm not going to feel the crystal maybe as much. I might feel it in subtle energies. Sometimes right. I'll feel like my my heart expand. And But if my heart's super open, the same crystal one day might make me feel this like, and then I pick it up a different day and I don't feel anything because I'm more into that. I'm already in that vibrational space. Yeah, your right? energy is different. Yeah. And yeah. so think about that for people too. It's like every time somebody, you know, it might feel different for you at different times, different days, depending on where you are. I, I always like to think about, you know, the, the graph and the flow of, or the analogy of like acupuncture, but like the Eastern medicine, you have all these meridian lines through your body and the channels are supposed to flow. Or when people see diagrams of either the seven chakra system or the 12 chakra system or whatever that is um, that you kind of more follow, and they're all right. I mean, there's seven and then there's 12 and then you can go up and then there's thousands, you know, mm -hmm. but it's just it's just levels of truth, right? You know, there's, yes, there's seven, but then there's 12 and then there's this. They're all correct. It's just how deep do you want to go? Um, yeah. But it, you know, like the spiral of energy and the circle of it and somebody can measure or feel. But if you can see that and how open or if you can imagine the channels like in the Eastern philosophy of of the body, if if there's any blocks within those channels or if there's any kind of that, what happens is the crystal interacts the crystal has an energy vibration in an energy field it has its own consciousness just like rebecca was saying but that energy field affects our energy field right it's kind of like we don't feel it right now but all anybody tuning into this is probably having this picture in this video or this audio automatically pop up on a phone or a tv or a computer 
without any cords that are putting it, the energy to it or the information to it. So it's literally ciphering energy out of the sky and, and impacting it. Now, if you've ever been next to, uh, especially in America, not in, in all of the like the really city city areas, but if you go to the rural areas and stuff like that, America is one of the only like first world countries in the world that still have the electric cords going up. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I have. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm in like the uh, middle of nowhere. Okay, right okay. So, right now, we got those right here too. Yeah. So, oh, but when you go, closure. yeah. So when you go next to them, especially like the big ones that have like the generators on it, you can feel your body vibrate from the energy, right? And so it's transmitting this energy yeah. frequency off of it and if you're far away or you're just moving through your day you're not noticing it the closer you get to it the more impact you feel and you feel this like you know yeah, type yeah. of stuff if you walked ever up to an electrical fence and you hear it right that's yeah. kind of like a crystal the closer it gets to your body and your proximity it starts to it has a vibration just like that and it starts to interact with the vibration of you and it's going to cause different things to happen so different alignments activating certain channels maybe opening certain chakras having your energy flow in ways that maybe it was stuck or speed up in ways that it was sluggish and slowed down um and, and that might feel good or it might feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. And, <laughs> and so well, I guess my point on that, what was my point on that? You know, like about kind of like how uh, crystals work and the energy of them. Yeah. But, but the consciousness and the interaction with ourselves. Now, for those that need a little bit more like, oh, this sounds so hooey wooey. This They're thing <laughs> is powered by a quartz crystal. Look it yeah. up. Fact checked me. It's po it, it, there's quartz crystals in here. You and know, your like computers. Yeah, your computers. Your you know, like your nice watches. They're powered yeah. by quartz crystals. They keep time. They keep energy really well. Like, okay, everything that's made in this world is made from earth matter. We reconstruct it and we put it together and we do different things with it. But there's crystals continue to grow in the earth. They continue to get bigger. They continue to generate. Where is that generation or gener you know, a good example of this is azurite to malachite to crystal cola. And like when you look at malachite to crystal, it's forever changing, it's forever evolving. It's not like it's like, ooh, I'm done, you know? Anyways, yeah. that, that's my yeah, piece. Yeah, like it's a being, you know. It's uh, yeah. grows just like you know people. A do tree. And, yeah, you know? a tree, right? So exactly. So if you can't tell, because I've got moldavite around me in several different. I don't know if you actually have moldavite with you right now, but it's a highly energizing crystal, right? So, and I've uh, given the example that it's a little bit like a caffeine boost. At least that's how I've experienced it, and I have a really sensitive system. Like for somebody that's more grounded in their energy. Um, I think those people tend to, it feels a little bit more yummy for if you're like a sort of an earth fire, like a little bit more light and zippy of a person, it might be a bit more destabilizing. It mm -hmm. has a very, for anybody that speaks astrology, it has a very Ur Uranus type energy. Um, so I don't want to go off too much into a, a rabbit hole of that, but it's very futuristic. It's very revolutionary and it destabilizes to bust out of old systems and old paradigms right so it launches you with like this cosmic thunderbolt sort of galactic energy into the future whether you're ready or not right so um but it's lovely and one of the things that's so important about moldavite that i wanted to touch on because you brought this up is that um being linked into your purpose right um i think you did now i'm trying to now i'm yeah. ungrounded and trying to remember how it all links back but it's a heart chakra stone, right? And so people don't tend to talk that much about that aspect of Moldavite. They think of it more as like higher chakras. So very cosmic consciousness, very, um, very more like cerebral and energetic, but it is a stone of the heart. And if you think about your life purpose and the way that you're connecting with other people, you're connecting uh, with your own spirit or you're connecting with source energy, it, the portal of connection is always in the heart. I think that's my belief. Like, I think your heart is a portal for the divine in yeah. your energetic system. And um, 
so when you feel things in your heart, you can, that's like your divine guidance, right? <laughs> and so anyway, Moldavite really activates that. It's like a profound activation. And um, some people feel it more subtly and some people don't. But so Moldavite in particular is, would be called a tectite or no? I always think it's a glass though. So it's, can you yeah. uh, just briefly recap off what it is again? Yeah. So tectite, moldavite is in the classification and family of tectites. Now, a lot of people get that confused because they think, oh, moldavite's this special. And it is because it only comes from one region. It's, it's very unique. It's green. You know, but tectites can be green. They can be yellow. They can be um, brown. Um, but pretty wow. much black it's uh, it depends where the earth matter is underneath uh, tends to be mostly like sandish type of stuff but this collision of a meteorite comes down into earth and hits it in the byproduct it's not the meteorite it's the earth matter as a byproduct of colliding with mm -hmm. the cosmic meteorite it forms it gets it's so hot i mean you got to think this little little huge ass meteorite is coming mm. through the cosmos and you know burning the whole time and coming so fast that by the time it gets through our atmosphere and everything along those lines the collision is one super impactful you know some people think that it you know made the dinosaurs go extinct with the meteorite that hit in uh the gulf uh gulf coast now or and and then as a byproduct it's also super hot and so it you'll you'll look at it and it looks like almost like this molten glass and so this right here is a basic piece of tectite now all tectites are going to have some of that cosmic vibration but people say that things like moldavite or libyan desert glass or these special ones from these certain regions and areas have a little bit more mysticism and power or energetic force that's for you to decide some people have just as equal of a of an element with regular tectites most tectite that you see in, in stores or online you might not be able to pin the exact region that they come from mm -hmm. um you know we're constantly being hit with meteors over time it could be from any place in the in the, in the whole entire globe um so it's more of a general generalization but these special yeah. ones have the special only area so this um, can you get in i want to yeah get right up there yeah that's the black tactite that we sell well, it, at liberate it, it is and it isn't in a way uh, hang so on I'm hang on hold it there for a little longer because it, yeah it yeah no super i'm blurry i'm gonna do yeah. this though sweet okay oh okay. i just Okay, right. hold on, hold you on. You know what? It's not the light. It's more, oh, because we can, it's just blurry. It's a bit out of, uh, how about yeah. right here? Oh, there it is. Yeah. So I don't know. But do you, you see go. how, wait, yeah. wait, wait one second. Can there you, you go. See? There you go. Beautiful. But yeah. can you see that it is a little bit, it's transparent. It's mm -hmm. actually this one particularly is more of a brown than anything else. I mean, it's it, this is super thick though, too, right. in, in, in comparison to yours that you had. Yeah, that, the that's not a Moldavite though. You said that's just like a tech tech. This like, is for just example, tech tight. If you walked into Liberate Emporium and you would see like a, a dish, it would just say tech tight. Yeah, and so, it would, it and, would and just... can you tell me what the, what if someone said, what are the energetic properties of tech tight, like that tech tight, what would they be? Well, there it, it is along the same lines. It's it's cosmic. It's so uh, much cheaper. <laughs> it is like so much cheaper. But, but you got to think about what drives price. Isn't necessarily the impact on on somebody. You know, it's also the rarity of something, uh, and how easily the distribution is of it, and different things. And then, of course, always supply and demand. So you mm -hmm. have a couple different factors that go on. If you want to start and you, you maybe don't want to jump into a huge investment in getting a, a piece of Moldavite that can be quite pricey and the price keeps on going up because guess what? One region in the world, very limited supply and um, more and more people are hearing about it. So there's more and more demand. So there's more and more demand and less and less of the product. So the price per gram is going to continue to rise just because not unless another meteorite hits that region, which is very unlikely in our lifetime, you're never going to see any more of it, okay? Yeah. But this 
you know, regular tech type, it can be pretty inexpensive because meteorites hit everywhere all the time. And so there's so much of it. Most people don't want just specific tektite and, you know, kind of the, the common stuff. They want to get, you know, Libyan desert glass or they want to get moldavite because they want that specific thing that they've heard about. But tektite can be just as impactful as those other other areas. And just like Rebecca said with the, the moldavite, different pieces might affect you a little bit more. It's really important to kind of see what you're drawn to with tektite because in, even in one dish at one crystal store or online, um, more than likely most of the, the tektite would be from whatever region they mine that from. But if it's like, it could be from all different areas all put together. And so like you could grab one piece and one in the dish and then another piece next to it. And they're literally from across the globe from each other. Wow. So, um, yeah. So the ver the consistency of the energy is going to be very different among different pieces. Um, so, but it's a good starting point for a lot of people because you are going to have that out of this world type of feeling. You're going to have that spiritual alignment. You're going to have that heart opening. Um, many people say maybe a little bit more mild, but I would say that there's some strong tectites in there. Just, I mean, Moldavite is a tectite. So there's some strong tectites that you can find that will blast you out of this world too. So don't discredit the, the cheap tectite. No, and cheap, I just mean less costly, right? And You don't know, no, um, yeah. And like definitely always, I suggest um, people come in and they read the crystal descriptions in the store, they'll Google things, go by how it feels because um, you'll know if something doesn't feel good, it's not that you don't want to like have some courage and like lean into massive evolution. Like Christina was saying, you know, for example, some people will pair Moldavite with like hematite or a grounding stone. And I'm just like, why bother? <laughs> but uh, kind of the same thing as you, but I wasn't ready to work with it right away. And so you just want to feel, you'll know what crystals you're like, Ooh, this one's beautiful. I just drawn to it. And like, even if you're just drawn to it for the aesthetic, how it looks, how it feels, your sense of it, you just trust that because that's the energy that you need, right? And it's yeah. super not like a cognitive process or it doesn't have to be. Um, so, And that's an important yeah, note that you, you mentioned. Um, people always ask like, crystals, can I wear this one with this one or hold this one with that? You know, the answer in general is yes, but you have to think about what they do. And, and so, feel like, it out. yeah, but like you were just saying, Rebecca, like, Moldavite opens up your top chakras and hematite opens up your bottom chakras and pulls you down. So it's like, you know, that's Why? what, you know, like, okay, it's kind of in the same way of like, rose quartz and black tourmaline I look at. Like black tourmaline shrinks your aura and and rose quartz opens up your aura and your heart. So it's like, why put those together? You just cancel each other out. But, but that it, said, if it feels right for somebody, then by all means, I would say like do it. If for some reason it, feel, it might be adjusting your system just yeah. the right way if it feels right. But, but like generally, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know? I just think that that was it. Uh, uh, a nice yeah. little nugget of wisdom that I didn't want to get glossed over because many people, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, okay, you know, the yeah, end, no, that's good. Maybe just use it a little less often than gr grounding yourself while you're working But, with you know, it. the way I came to that conclusion, too, about not putting hematite with moldavite is that that didn't, does actually does not feel right to me. And I can tell it doesn't right away as soon as I, but maybe for somebody else it does feel good, but... Yeah, and some and people might not be as sensitive though, and they might it not know. It doesn't feel right to me. It's almost like if you're taste making a soup and you're putting in the things and you're just kind of tasting it and you're adjusting subtly here or there how you want something to taste. Like crystals working together is like a similar sort of feeling of that. Like even today I have, and I know Christina, you often have like a necklace with like three or four <laughs> crystals on it. And I usually don't pile a whole bunch of them up together but um occasionally on that day if i'm like yeah like it just feels like i'm like yep these three are going together today and then other days it might just be one or just one or one or two um so i'm always the adjusting is do you have the libyan desert glass that you can show no people? we'll talk about this is actually blue lace agate that came from oh, oh i could see um 
but uh, Libyan desert glass. So let's go on to that one next. Um, I should probably clean this piece, um, but I got this at a shop in New York City, um, like probably in 2014, 2015. And this is actually what I got because I didn't feel comfortable with Moldavite yet. Um, mm. And this is in the same category in, in that it is formed by extraterrestrial material colliding with Earth over the Libyan desert, right? Like a region, like I'm, yeah. I should have researched this. Before. Yeah, no, no, yes, yeah. so that, that, <laughs> Went comes on, from, but, that comes from Libya and Moldavite yeah. from the Czech Republic. So just so people know where the, the different regions are, but they both are in the classification and family of tektite. Right, okay. yes, so. and so, and this is like a glass, you know, um, it's a glass it's it's not uh crystalline really like in the same way that like a crystal it doesn't it's not like quartz mm -hmm. um but so this energy is a and being yellow it, it's like slightly mildly yellowish um and some depending on you know where you get yours it might be more yellow or less yellow and i think also a lot of fake Libyan desert glass floating around, but this one is lesser known. People know about Moldavite and a lot of people, most people don't know about Libyan desert glass. And this one resonates as being yellow with the solar plexus chakra, which is like around your rib cage, third chakra under your heart. And that is the seat of personal power. Um, so yeah, um, this resonates with that. And that felt good. It felt really good when I picked it up. And uh, actually, it felt really good. <laughs> I remember you were having a bad day and I put it on you and then you wore it for months. You know, I know. I didn't give it back to her. <laughs> I was like, can I get that back? <laughs> well, so what did you feel? Do you remember what you felt when you put it on? Um, I felt like a balancing and a calming. It just made me feel like mm -hmm. everything was going to be OK. Yeah, super different than the Moldavite discussion we just had, right? Super yeah. Super different. Um, yeah, it, it stabilized my sense of power when I put it on. And it was, like, energizing, um, but not in, like, a way that made me feel off kilter or out of control or anxious. Um, so that is, that's that. Libyan desert glass. And we haven't had a lot of Libyan desert glass in stock in our shop. It's been harder to stock. We've had it. Like, I think we got it from your friend that came through and then once it was sold out, that was it. Like, do we yeah. have any right now? We do not have any Libyan desert glass right now. It's one of those rare ones and it's a lot harder now, especially with COVID to do any type of imports, exports are, are uh, not quite as flowing. <laughs> that just... said, we do have like a sick collection of Molivite in the shop and I and, picked it out myself. And a lot of tech type. And a lot of Tektite. Um, I picked it out myself. I remember when going out to Santa Clarita to the warehouse um, and they're like the highest standards of importing, like their sources are second to none. Um, and I remember picking up this bag of, of Moldavite and like just and she had me buy the whole about thing. my day. Like <laughs> we were, and, I, and then like five minutes later, I was like, woo! I was like, like I had like 10 cups of coffee and I was like, oh my God, it's the Moldavite, you know? And I felt, felt amazing actually. So that's the Moldavite that we have in stock it, at Liberate. You can order it. And I think we have some carved pieces as well if you're looking for like, you know, and the pieces yeah. are like all different sizes, right? So you can start, you don't need a huge piece of Moldavite. Um, like this is a pretty big sizable piece of Libyan desert glass. It's actually um, less expensive typically than Moldavite, but still not maybe in the same price range as like quartz or something. It's a bit more. So like a piece of Moldavite this size would be like very dear. Um, uh, be but so and yeah, you, huh? It would probably be in the thousands for in that. Thousands. I mean, depending. so this was like 60 bucks or something, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, Moldavite, again, you don't need large pieces. I don't remember what I paid for this. Um, we but, charge $15 a gram, so that's probably like a $15 yeah. piece. So not huge. This is, well, this, this is actually not from our store, even though I oh, do yeah. have other, yeah, um, other other pieces so um yeah i just saw it somewhere and it's like an arrowhead and i knew i needed to have it but yeah anyway so the next category um of stones to talk about yeah so we have a lots of moldavite we have lots of tektite not so much libyan desert glass but check back in because we'll get it when we can and, and then we can ship anywhere in the world so holler but uh all right 
Um, uh, the so other thing, since my camera doesn't make it too clear, but I'll, I'll show you guys real quick. I can hang it. Do 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 do. Okay. Oh. Um, this little guy right here. It's really shiny, more metallic right. metal. Okay. I need to ask you to come closer with that. Uh, All right. If you can, the same way that you did before, but we don't need your. Uh, we don't need your. There it is. That. Okay. Yeah, that's amazing, and it has literally like the way it's cut looks like a star of David. Yeah. Like a Merkaba. Yeah. Yeah. And so I got it because I felt it looked like a Merkaba uh, in the Liberate logo. Tell us um, everything about. What, so what is this crystal? So, not necessarily a crystal per se, as a crystal comes from Earth, right? But this is actually, so the meteorite, when it hits, the, what's left of it, which most of the time, you know, it's not that much left with a meteorite. It starts out, you know, it's a lot of it burns away. But think about what is the base of a meteorite is this metallic metal substance that came God knows where. Uh, from, you know, so far away and whatever happened from a collision of planets or a collision of, of something, but a collision of some sort happened somewhere in the cosmos and these meteorites come traveling across and, you know, we're hit with them every, every, every day, every moment, there's, there's, not every moment, but every day we're hit with meteorites that are coming in and most of them get burned out by our, our atmosphere. And, and so our atmosphere keeps a lot of the meteorites from actually touching and hitting Earth and it's like the shield that we have around our planet. However, some of them hit. And so when you think about the moon, you think about all the craters in the moon, it's because the moon doesn't have the same atmosphere protection layer as as Earth on it. So a lot of the, all of those little indent craters that you see are just being bolted with uh, meteorites all the time. Now, since uh, the these are a little bit rare for it to not be burnt off by the time it hits Earth and to, you know, collide, uh, the metal that is in these meteorites often are very different metals than even some of the ones found in Earth. Uh, mm -hmm. So some of them can exist of some of our, our, our um, a periodic table of elements and, and, and some of the metals and things in that, but sometimes they might even have things that aren't. Um, so each meteorite can be a little bit different and special and unique uh, because they come from different areas. They ha they're a different planet that starts or a different collision, you know, so there's so much to them. Uh, but if you really want to get a piece of outer space, it's than getting a meteor right. And so, because it's pretty much a piece of metal, they can cut it and make it look prettier. Sometimes you can see it and it's just like a blob of molted things that they chip it off. Um, a lot of meteorites get brought into, you know, different governments for testing on the metals and stuff. So again, it makes it a little bit less common that they're out in circulation for people to buy. Um, but again, you can find them. Uh, the price of them are going to be a little bit more expensive. You're going to go up a little bit more than even Moldavite just because they're rarer. Um, a lot of the meteorites, as I said, are taken for testing and research. And uh, most of them, the amount in the mass that that ends up is so small that it's 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 a lot less of circulation of the material you know the impact of the earth matter from the meteorite hitting is going to be that much greater because it's affecting in that whole radius around it but the amount of meteorite could be like this little guy you know and that's all it is mm. um so think about that what i find that it does is um it helps you communicate if anybody's interested in ETs, light language, um, communicating with, you know, extraterrestrials and stuff like that. Uh, that's where you grab and you grab the meteorite. It's that connection to other planes, other regions in the universe and the cosmos. Uh, when I started wearing the meteorite, um, I think it was the first time ever that I, I started channeling light language. Um, so 
a, a little bit different. A moldavite and tektites really aligning you with your soul's path. Meteorites really connecting you to other dimensions and other um, beings. Yeah. Um, my question about light language, which we could do a whole podcast on that, um, but what did you when you're doing light language you're channeling frequency and so my understanding is it might not always be like um super cognitive like you might get a clear message but also you're channeling energy so does sometimes like when what you're feeling you're just getting you're downloading a feeling more than a thought or is it sometimes with a combination or also sometimes you get like a super clear message? Like what are you experiencing when you're downloading? Well, it's like a download of, of this it, energy, right? It's a download of this energy, but sometimes it's an active conversation. And it's very interesting. When it first happened to me, I mean, I didn't really understand. It was almost like this overpowering, like I was, I, it was like I was spinning and then it was almost like this, like, like just stuff was coming out and then, I wasn't really sure what the heck was happening, but it was more of a vibrational, and that I would say was more of a download. Mm -hmm. And the sounds and the tones that I was saying were probably doing some type of healing residence on my body, right? Yeah. And then I've had the feeling and the uh, sensation and the experience of, of the same type of thing, but where it's almost like ancient tongue and it is a feeling of a back and forth conversation where I'm getting images or ideas pop in my head as I'm communicating back this this interesting tongue so wow so both. ask yeah like um the type of consciousness or the type of ideas, the type of frequency. I know you said healing, but, and it's interesting. It's almost like crop circles, like the idea that um, it's a frequency, it's a design, which carries frequency, right? Sacred geometry. So that's just putting the energy here into earth, whether there was ever a conversation or a cognitive, it was, it's not necessarily always a cognitive process, right? Yeah. It's just a frequency that gets anchored here and then begins to do its work. But I'm um, curious, like how a lay person, because I don't talk to ETs yet, <laughs> um, but I, yeah, like how would somebody understand what kind of information, you know? Okay, so on saying, <laughs> so on on the healing aspect, uh, think of it as like vocal toning, or if anybody's mm -hmm. ever sat in on a sound bath or had. Uh, been to a music performance or something where that music and that vibration just changes their energy field there's something super powerful about the frequency of sound and so on that doing and and holding different pitches at ways that i couldn't do on a conscious level um I mean, I'm sure with training, but I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. So that had an, an immediate effect of feeling certain vibrational channel shift in my body. Now that is that. On the other aspect, um, really kind of crazy messages of more larger picture items. And so what do I mean by that with communication? Uh, less concerned with your daily uh, daily life of the tasks and the responsibilities that you have in a daily life and more along the lines of bigger picture type of path life purpose consciousness world issues those kind of things the collective yeah that that's more the the type of conversation and awareness uh, i would put it very similar for those that are watching that if you've ever done ayahuasca and that oh well i mean there's some people that do ayahuasca and they ask about very specific things in their life or they go back to their traumas but if you could if you use ayahuasca to its best uh, capacity you will get information about how you can ask it any question so you can you can ask it about your particular love or you can ask it about what is love for the universe and what is what is the human experience of love like they're very different questions and you're going to get very different answers and so I, I always say the the quality of the information always depends on the quality of your questions uh-huh 
And yeah. and so when I went into and I was pl- practicing with this, I went in with intentions of questions to ask with information to be downloaded. You know, like so in, in yeah. meditations and stuff like that. So um, I think it would be different for different people and I think that there would be yeah. information um, but higher levels of perspective. They all, these crystals will, any crystal or, or meteorite or tectite will meet you where you are. And it's the same with astrology and all of that, right? So it's just an energetic influence. And depending on where you are, it's, you're able to in, interact with that and grow, you know, in your own capacity. So it sounds like meteorite is kind of like the bird's eye view, like the biggest, uh, yeah, the furthest out. Yeah. But they're all different, right? You know, so yeah. like that's yeah. this higher picture and sometimes you need that and that's great. And, you know, I mean, think about your GPS on your car and you're driving somewhere. Sometimes you need that bird's eye view, but sometimes that's like a little irritating and irrelevant if you need to know like what are the current streets and where to go and what yeah. to do. You need that internal view. So every perspective is important. and every aspect of your life deserves intention at different times in your life so um it's not that any one is better than the other any any aspect is this or that you know it's just different times different places different emotions different states uh and different insights sweet Wow. What'd you say? I mean, like, like you're the one Moldavite to the Libyan desert glass to the different Moldavite, you know, and and at different times, it's like, you know, you said for two years, you didn't really work with Moldavite much. And then you started to, you know? Yeah. And I haven't even like in the past little while until, um, you know, now there's a lot shifting and changing in the world. And my life is no exception to that. A lot of big changes. And so I'm uh looking for how i can these like they're medicine they're vibrational support right Mm -hmm. it's vibrational support so i know there's a lot of big changes happening and i just want those to be the best changes i want to be the most in alignment that i can be and there's many tools you don't need crystals but they're wonderful tools like if you got them like they're awesome you know um so yeah, was there any other crystal that we didn't talk about or like a galactic crystal friend? <laughs> I think galactic really like crystal main... friend. I think that that's the, the main ones that are really associated very strongly with uh, the cosmos because they came either from the cosmos directly or as a byproduct of the cosmos coming to Earth. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's other really high vibrational crystals that are out there that have very powerful energy for opening up your crown chakra and things like that. Um, You know, but those are all, you know, things that are from here and everything along those lines. That could be a different episode. Yeah, I think so. But uh, yeah. All All right, anything else you wanna share, Rebecca? You know, I think just to cap it off, I would say totally go by your feeling. Like if your curiosity is peaked and you're interested, um, and I don't know where, where you are in the world right now, or if you have access during COVID to go into a crystal shop to like Emporium is still open as of now. Um, you can come in and feel the crystals if you're wearing a mask. Um, if you're not in LA, you can order them online and just kind of tap in and just trust i guess um but yeah just go by your feeling of what you're drawn to and see um if you're not drawn to moldavite you're not drawn to it but if you're drawn to it like lean into it you know um same with any crystals just kind of feel it out because a lot of the time it's it's really not a cognitive process it's energy and there's a lot of information that you're receiving that isn't happening cognitively but we're not used to that in our western society and way of operating and thinking we think the only way to receive information is through the mind um or through our like thinking you know and it's just not really uh you get information through other senses through sensing and other ways all the time and you just don't re- really realize you're doing that so with crystals, well, think about this just the, yeah. just to drill that bit home 85 percent of communication is nonverbal. boom 
Yeah. So, I mean, you're picking up, you know, on the body, the posture, the tonality of voice, all of these subtle things. You're getting information not thinking logically because your mind will process the words and the sentences somebody says, but you're processing so much more. So you're processing actually more from not thinking than you are from thinking. Far more. Far more. And with the crystal, even though, you know, well, you can talk, you can talk to it too. But if you're, you know, say you're still kind of like, this is new, or you're not that comfortable, you don't feel like you're intuitive, or you're just waiting, you're like, ah, I don't feel anything or whatever. But just ask yourself this one simple question. Do you like it? Or do you not like it? It's really that simple. Like, and it can, and aesthetics don't discount those either. You can be, I just like how it looks. I just like how it feels like, um, or how I feel about it, not even how it feels, but how you feel about it. And you don't have to worry about why. And what happens constantly is people will pick up a crystal that, um, does exactly what they needed, um, without having researched the properties of it. It's all the time. Like that's all the time in, in the shop. And, uh, or that's even better than what they thought they needed. They're like, actually, I really needed this one. Um, yeah. And they got it just based on they liked how it looked or whatever. Yeah. So you never know why you're yeah. drawn to something. Yeah. Go with it, you know, mm-hmm. and, and explore it. So that's the vibe. But um, thanks for being with us today, everyone, on our galactic crystal Dirty. journey. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, you can check out our online store. I actually don't think, I'll have to make sure I put some Moldavite in the online store. Yeah, we'll even put it on a discount <laughs> for you there. guys. We'll put it uh, a little Ooh. bit cheaper. We normally sell it for $15 a gram. We'll put a special on there if you're if you're interested. Okay, yeah, so should we do a promo code or something or, or not? We'll just put it up for... We'll put it up. We'll figure it out. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Have Thanks, a beautiful everyone. day. Have a and beautiful until day. Next day. If you enjoyed this conversation, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want some more amazing resources on your path of liberation, head over to liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, at Liberate Hollywood. All one word or Liberate Emporium. All one word. Until next time liberate yourself. Okay, well, uh, my name is Rebecca. Hi, I'm Reverend Doreen. Hi, my name is Travis. My name is Kimberly. My name is Lily, and I'm an energy healer at Liberate Hollywood. I really believe that everything is transmutable and everything is possible. I believe that we are swimming in a sea of energy and, um, that this energy is love, even though I know a lot of the time it doesn't always feel like that. And I do pranic healing, which is energy. I'm a Reiki master, more energy. So what am I? I am a channel for energy to come through me to help you. There really isn't anything that you would need to do to prepare for a session other than be comfortable. The whole goal of the session is to provide you with a warm, comforting, soul and heart-centered environment from which to allow healing to occur. No, no, just come as you are. Always just come as you are. Uh, That's my job as a healer, to meet you where you are, to figure out what you need, um, and to give that to you, or to guide you also. Um, I'm so honored to be a guide in helping you to connect. To help re-energize you, heal you, change your programming so that you're no longer in your way of getting to the things that you desire in your life. My objective, working with clients, I guess would be to help them connect to their divine self uh, so that they can facilitate their spiritual journey and their soul's path. In all forms of energy healing, regardless of what the practitioner says, it is up to the client to change their life. As a practitioner, we're serving as a channel or as a as an instrument for God to do the work, but it is up to the client to to make better choices. I'm most passionate, I think, about being able to create a loving, supportive, and heart and soul-centered environment for clients to heal. I get really excited when I have a new client who's never experienced energy work before, and they tend to say that they were drawn or magnetized into the store, and they don't exactly 
know why or what for. And it's a it's an opportunity to introduce them to the divine. And I think it's a really beautiful thing to have that moment of awareness and that they're in that space of surrender because they don't have any expectations and they really get to see what it feels like to be a spiritual being. Once you activate that place within yourself, uh, it's powerful and it feels so good. It's very healthy for the body. I think it realigns all of your energy. Um, it connects you to source, uh, both within you and outside of you. It's really cool. It's such an honor and a privilege to be in the space where a moment happens and people have this awareness about who they are or they're able to grieve over something they may not have been able to before or they are able to see themselves for who they truly are in a more empowered and soul-centered way. But I'm trying to give you the tools so that when you leave, you feel, you feel connected come with an open mind, come with um, humor in your heart, and, and we'll get you on the right path for you. You'll learn more about yourself, you'll let go of things that might be holding you back in your life, and you'll feel more empowered about your decisions. I hope to see you soon. So, expect change. Radical change. <laughs> I laugh, but it's true. <laughs> Thank you, and I wish you love, peace, and higher consciousness. <laughs>